Welcome back to Ravenhawk Tech. In this video, we're going to be continuing to work with our vCenter environment that we set up. We're going to be setting up a VMware DRS environment or DRS cluster, which is a collection of EFXI hosts and associated virtual machines with shared resources and shared management interface. So what you're going to get from this is load balancing option which the VMware uh, server monitors the distribution and usage of CPU and memory resources for all hosts and virtual machines in a cluster. It compares these metrics to ideal resource utilizations uh, given the attributes of the cluster resource pools and virtual machines and be able to balance them accordingly. You can also get power management when you actually use uh, VMware v uh, DTM, which is distributed power management, which compares cluster and host level or level capacity to the demands of the cluster virtual machines, including recent historical demands. And then of course, virtual machine placements through vMotion. And of course, on addition to that and connected with all of these, being able to configure resource groups. So that way you can more closely target your placement for redundancy as far as Say you have two VMs, SQL 1, SQL 2, and you want to make sure that they do not sit on the same host, you can actually use DRS groups to actually manage that and handle your resources. Um, and also watch to make sure that your SQL servers do not take over more resources on the host than they need to and grow beyond what they're set to have. Uh, I use SQL servers as reference in this one, but it pretty much counts for any type of environment. Now, when I go ahead and I do that, it's just as a matter of clicking on the cluster, going to configure, and then DRS options are right here. So you hit edit, and you would choose whether you need it to be fully automated. It takes a few seconds for it to initialize here. There we go. Uh, you can choose once you turn it on, you can choose it to be fully automated, partially automated, or manual. And it kind of breaks down here. The fully automated its virtual machines will automatically be placed on the host when powered on and will be automatically migrated from one host to another to optimize resource usage. Partially automated is a virtual machine will be automatically placed on the host to power on and vCenter will suggest a migration related, so there'll be a notice when you go to your vCenter or if you have it set up to email you, stating that there are DRS uh, placement suggestions. And then of course manual, which is at power up, you basically are getting a recommendation, but you can choose to override it. Um, and of course you can adjust your migration threshold and turn on predictive DRS. So basically predictive DRS is in addition to real-time metrics, DRS will respond to forecasted metrics provided by vRealize operation servers. So if you are using vRealize, you can actually configure up that to balance based on previous historical data, on metrics that you have, on basically, you know, what is a potential usage based on historical usage. Um, and then of course you can do virtual machi uh, machine automation and the distributed uh, distribution, memory matrix, metrics, all of these different things that you can do based on this data. So I'm gonna leave it as fully automated and all the default settings pretty much are good enough at least for what I'm doing. And that's it, it's set up. So now I can actually go ahead and go here and there we go. I can say a uh, new resource pool. And just cause I was talking about SQL servers, we'll call it a SQL server. So I'm gonna call this one SQL servers. Now SQL servers are high memory usage machines. So I'm gonna say high on that. And CPUs, they can use a lot of CPUs, but SQL servers tend to use disk space and memory more than anything. So a normal threshold on that is fine. Now, you can leave it as these options for expandable, 
or actually specifically finite limit it down so it doesn't take over your entire machine. What you would want to consider though is these are the overall resources for all the VMs in them. So for example, if you put a reservation of say 32 gigs on this and you have multiple 16 gig servers, they will cap out. You're only allowing up to 30 gigs or 32 gigs of reservation. That's it. So keep that in mind. For this, I'm going to leave it as is because like I do in all these videos so far, this is just the intros at the moment. So I'm going to hit OK. And then, of course, you can add in additional VMs under that. <clears throat> so we're going to go ahead and I can create up a basic machine here just by going and right clicking on the resource group, going new virtual machine and add the VM in. And that's basically for a DRS. That's all you really need at the moment to get going. Now, if I wanted to take this a step further and actually do a high availability, I can then go and turn on HA. But before I configure the HA, I'm going to want to make sure to do a couple of preemptive steps, such as going into my networking and back to my distributed switch, which you saw in the past video, and go ahead and say I want a new port group. New port group is going to be called failover. You can also call it secondary. Um, create that. I'm going to leave it as is. I'm not going to worry about configuring any of the additional steps here. And hit finish. Now I have a primary and a failover switch. What I am going to want to do is go to each of my hosts. Stop. I'm going to want to go ahead and add in a new virtual switch here. I'm going to actually want to go ahead and add in a new VM kernel adapter. I'm going to go ahead and hit the add host networking here. You have the options to choose from a physical network adapter, a virtual machine port group for a standard switch, or in this case, a VM kernel network adapter. Hit next on that first one. I'm going to choose my failover network and you see why you want to go ahead and do this at the get-go so that way that's already configured. Hit next. This is going to be failover for management. What I'm going to want specifically on this one is just the management interface. Now you can do additional ones and that's fine but for my needs I don't need to do that. All of that is handled by the primary. Uh, however, if for any reason your primary does fail, you may want these options configured. And the base ones you'd want to have configured is vMotion, provisioning, and then these replication ones. And that's it. Fault tolerance is if you're using fault tolerance in vSAN is if you're using vSAN. So I'm just going to leave it as management for mine and hit next. I am going to also choose an IP address, and on my first host, I had 6610, so I'm going to use 6611, which is why I left that open. My default gateway for it is fine, but you can, of course, override that, and then hit finish. Do the same thing on the secondary host, and I'll add that secondary port group as well, or the uh, VM kernel. Since I'm doing 12, this is going to be 13.
Now, of course, you get your redundancy here because I made a change. So it had a blip and enough of it to kick off the alert. So I'm just going to acknowledge these again. Instead of just waiting for them to clear, I tend to just, you know, like to clear them out myself. And my system is now configured. I have my two IP addresses for primary and failover. You'll notice, of course, the network label where it says primary failover. All of that's already configured. Um, right now, actually, both, yeah, both have only management. None of them are configured here for the vMotion or any of that. You're going to want to configure those here in the future when you go to start doing your vMotion and stuff. Uh, however, a lot of the times when you go to start to configure up the HA and everything else, Sometimes those will be done for you. Um, doesn't always happen. So it's not a bad idea to go in and configure those. But for this, you would go to set up the uh, HA, you would go here, you would go to, well, which is to your cluster, you would go to configure, to your vSphere availability, and you would hit edit. And then here, you have the option to either turn on regular vSphere HA or turn on proactive HA, which basically proactive is enables a feature to allow proactive migration of VMs from hosts on which a provider has notified a health degradation. I can't talk, <laughs> sorry. Um, I'm just going to turn on regular HA for this one because in this one you can tell it, of course, to do things like manual auto and stuff like that, but you have to configure your proactive HA, um, which, of course, you can do here, which would basically mean that when you go to do it, you can basically tell it what to actually do to the host and configure up your HA provider and so forth, but then you're going to need to have a witness host and the appliance and everything configured, which I do not have currently configured. So here I'm just going to do a regular vSphere HA. I can go in and adjust, for example, the data stores, which if I hit OK, you'll notice that it will allow me to configure it, but it will complain at some point that I do not have two data stores configured for HA. In this case, there has to be two data stores that are configured available or a heartbeat between the hosts. So a local data store on one host and a local data store on another host, not going to really fly because they're not interconnected. But you can do that if, for example, you have a fiber attached storage or you configure vSAN. With vSAN, you're actually taking all of the local storage on the machine and creating up a clustered, hyperconverged network style drives. Basically, you're taking, like say, four drives from one and four drives from the other, along with two SSDs, or an SSD, and merging them into one large data store. Um, it has its benefits. From my personal experience, it also has its weaknesses. So you have to weigh what you need for your environment. All right, so in conclusion, if you would like to set up an HA in your lab environment, the options that you're gonna to have to do is either A, set up an iSCSI storage uh, via either a VM uh, configured as a storage provider or a Linux VM or Windows VM, uh, running iSCSI. Um, if you have a fiber attached storage, you can also do that. Um, but as a virtual environment testing out HA, um, an option that you can try, um, though I would need to do some research and I'll show you in a later video, depending on how well it works, is you can try to do a shared drive. Um, I had actually attempted that during this video uh, as part of the stuff that's ending up in the cutting room floor because it did not work well. I need to research the reasons why. 
And other than that, this is DRS and this is HA. Uh, a lot of these videos are intro videos. If you would like to know more in depth, please leave it down in the comment. Um, also, subscribe to my channel. There's a bell notification. Go ahead and hit that. And uh, please leave me any comments on things that you'd like to see me do or you'd be interested in learning about. I know I'm heavily focused on VMware right now. So, hope you guys enjoyed. Thank you very much. And I'll see you next time.